My name is Jan McCulloch and I'm an artist based in Belfast in Northern Ireland. I work mainly with photography, sculpture and installation. Tricks of the Trade is an installation of sculptures, structures and photographs which explore spaces of construction. The title of the show comes from a manual I have in the studio, the first chapter of which is called Time and Money Saving Tricks of the Trade. And I guess the titles also nod to the kind of vocabulary of, of those DIY processes as well. I'm interested in the places where people construct, assemble and make things and the rituals and rhythms of the work that goes on in those places. I have been photographing spaces like hardware stores, workshops, garages and sheds for a number of years and for this work, I wanted to translate aspects of those images into sculptural environments too. I had photographed a series of work platforms and step ladders a couple of years ago that were built specifically by people to fix certain parts of um, machinery. They were in a series of warehouses and when walking through them, they were, they were really tall. They were almost on kind of stilts. They were really gangly, kind of creature-like structures. When I was photographing them, I found the experience of physically navigating around them in the space really interesting. They looked like a series of nests and it was quite a childlike experience, ducking under them, walking through and, and climbing over parts of them. Until recently, the photographs I'd taken of them, I used in sketchbooks to collage, isolate certain parts of, cut up, and kind of collage new structures from them. But for this work, I wanted to physically construct them in response to and in dialogue with the images. I guess I wanted to recreate fragments of them in the space and recreate the experience of walking around them too. I was also interested when building this middle gallery space and how I could navigate someone to walk around the structures. A bit like when I'm using a camera, I move my own body to position the frame of the photograph and to change the image. I wanted to see what kind of different viewpoints I could create within that structure. The materials I've worked with in Tricks of the Trade are mainly expedient building materials and they're very much based on the photographs I've taken of the spaces. They're almost lifted out a bit like a shopping list. I make lists of the materials in the spaces and then begin working with kind of smaller edits of them uh, for maquettes and that kind of develops as it grows into a bigger space. For this show the materials include cut and tort steel, boiled linseed oil, domestic emulsion paint, plywood, timber, um, and also a triptych of photographic prints as well, which are on the walls, almost like kind of notes inside the space. The colours I used in the installation are certain tones that were found in the spaces I've been researching. There was certain colours repeated in machinery on the walls and floors of the environments as well. For example, the green in the first gallery is a, is a mossy green, and it really reminded me of the external building yards and outsides of these workspaces. It also has quite a chemical hue to it as well, like a cleaning product. The frames on the prints in galleries two and three reference colours in the objects from the spaces the installation is based on. So biro blue, rust orange and pink cloth lilac. The pink shade that Gallery 3 is painted in is called Docket Pink, referencing a receipt you get from a builder's yard. I like the way materials inhabit a space, and especially with smell. When you walk into these galleries, you're hit with the scent of oil, timber and metal. That experience of, of placing you within an environment with the sense of smell is something I really wanted to explore a bit further and something I worked on with Wendy Erskine in the accompanying text for the show. And when you engage with what Wendy has written, I think no matter where you are, you're dropped into one of those spaces with the descriptions of the smells, the cold metal, the, the boiled linseed oil and, and the dust sheets. Something I've always been drawn to is how we use photography to construct and imagine ourselves. 
And a lot of my previous work has been based around procedures for organising and instruction manuals. Whether that's physically constructing in a space or looking at photography's role in the construction of identity. I made a work in 2015 called Home Instruction Manual. I typed how to make a home into Google and it led me to a chat room online in which people were exchanging really detailed advice on how to make a home from scratch or how to decorate their home. I printed off all the instructions and rented a house outside Belfast for two months and set to carrying out their advice from scratch. And it was almost like trying on different lives for size. And photography had this massive role for these people in this process of when the house was finished and, and photographed, that would be the home because it looked good on camera. The end result of the project is a book, a manual, um, in which the photographs of the finished house are paired with the instructions followed. A couple of years later, I made a film about vision boards and the people who use them. In the film, I followed a vision board party host called Kaya, who hosts these parties in which people get together and cut up photographs from magazines and newspapers um, to manifest their ideal future lives. And it was this kind of tactile relationship with photography and construction that really interested me. My own process as an artist quite frequently involves me making collages and mood boards in order to just think through research and connect certain ideas. And I love that people were using this as a tool for their lives as well. I originally studied photography at art college, but I now use photography in a much wider sense. Photography has always been and continues to be the backbone of my practice, even though the final object I present may not be a photographic print. In this show, it's primarily sculpture. There's only a series of three very small prints in the gallery. For me, the camera acts as a sort of instrument for dissecting and analysing space. They're more than records. For me, they're the source of like shapes and forms that I then go on to transform in later stages of the work. When I'm documenting a space that I'm interested in working with, I like to use quite a powerful flash gun on the camera. And it has this way of almost dissecting the space and flattening like panes of it. For example, if you photograph a pane of glass in a space, it with a flash gun, it'll bounce the light right back at you and it'll almost flatten that object or blow it out in the frame. And I quite often, print and collage photographs of the same space, dissecting it, painting over it in order to create and transform kind of new spaces, new imagined spaces from it. I use photographs physically in my scrapbooks and sketchbooks. I cut and paste them as a way of working ideas out. I'll sometimes recreate small fragments of the photographs whether it be a certain material that was in them, I'll recreate that in the space, or I'll kind of destabilize certain objects, you know, cutting legs off, transform them kind of beyond their original functional purpose. The photograph may not always be the end point in the process, but it's always there as a way of working through it and seeing the space in the first place. I also think it's quite interesting in how we remember space differently and how the camera records it. I remember documenting the space that the, the middle gallery is based on, which is a series of kind of work platforms and work benches and step ladders. And when I first photographed that, it was a couple of years ago now, and I'd since been working with them in my sketchbook. And I think I remembered them differently a couple of years down the line. I couldn't they'd almost melded with the collages and I, I remember them in a much tighter space and a lot taller that they, than they had been. But it was just the way I photographed it and then worked with them afterwards. And it made me want to experiment with rebuilding it, how I'd reimagined it in my head, but in the space. Before I made this work, I had always photographed a lot of sculptural things, but I really wanted to move to, to physically constructing stuff as well. 
when I was doing my residency at the Irish Museum of Modern Art in Dublin, I was given this studio that was bigger than I'd ever worked in before and the work seemed to just expand into it and I was suddenly working on a, a much bigger scale than I had been before and when I came home halfway through the residency because of lockdown in 2020 I really wanted to keep working on the scale I had been. I find it so exciting but it just wasn't possible. I didn't have the same space and in quite a DIY since I guess I had to just adapt to whatever I had. So I was making projections onto the walls using an old school projector and transparencies. But it's funny how that influenced how I was working because it was so tiny, it was really easy to change colors on them. It was really easy to change the, the way the structures were standing and, and composed. And it definitely, had an influence of how I wanted to build in, in CCA when I got there. When installing in CCA, I really wanted to keep that way of working that I had been quite ad hoc and responding to the space and building to how it felt when I was there and around the structures. So while I had a lot of images and collages as notes with me when I kind of showed up to install in the galleries, I definitely wanted it to be an organic process of seeing what the materials became in that particular space. I wanted to leave things quite open to naturally develop in dialogue with the galleries at CCA. When thinking of the exhibition, I knew I had to provide some form of text to provide context for the viewer about the work. We ended up writing quite a simple gallery text, but I wanted something else that would expand the experience of the work for the viewer. I was really lucky to work with Wendy Erskine, who's a brilliant writer from Belfast, and we collaborated on a piece called Instructions for the Assembly of Workspace. We had conversations about the types of spaces I was interested in when making the work, and also exchanged materials from the studio here, like photographs, collages, paint cards, lists of words, the kind of shopping lists. I really like the concept that you don't have to be with the work to get a, a small experience of it. The text allows you to access that in your own house even. I think when you engage with Wendy's text, you're almost dropped into one of those spaces that you might be familiar with. It's not a prescription of the particular space I've made, but it's of a place you might have visited before. You can almost smell when you're reading it, the, the steel and the oil and the wood. The text is designed to accompany the work, but at the same time exist on its own as well. We wanted to leave room for the viewer to bring their own experiences to it too. The booklet for the text was designed by Sean Greer at Non-Graphic Studio. I knew I wanted the text to be a physical object that came from a DIY culture. We wanted it to reflect in quite a subtle way the research that had gone into the work and the colour palette involved. As the research for the design, we'd been looking at a lot of kind of DIY packaging, the instructions you get with flat packed furniture, the promotional posters in hardware stores and the fonts and the colours involved with that. 